Okay, guys, here is, uh, I've completed the conversion of the LS671 slash VRC loudspeaker. Uh, <clears throat> I'm showing you a, a schematic of what I've done. Uh, so if you could, uh, you can freeze this to take a look at and see what I did. But uh, in the end, I only ended up cutting three wires that were in this speaker. Uh, which I'm going to show you next there. We'll take that away. Basically, there's the internals of the speaker right there. Let's see if we can... Uh... Kind of zoom in a little bit there. But uh, over on the, your, your lower right there, uh, right here, I, uh, I actually added this item here, which is a coaxial... Uh, power supply, uh, <clears throat> what is it, the coaxial connector for a power supply. Uh, basically it's a 5.5mm uh, by 2.1mm <clears throat> and so uh, I can power it from a 12 volt power supply. Basically uh, positive voltage is coming in off the center pin. It comes down to uh, this switch right here which is a, a little toggle switch I added. It's a uh, double pull double throw switch and it has six contacts on it it's it's uh, two on positions when you have it in one on position the other on position is disconnected and vice versa so basically the voltage comes in to the common which is the center um, the center uh, connect connection on the switch when you fl flip the switch to one of the on positions the voltage goes out down this yellow wire which is one of the wires that I cut off of J1 right here you can see where I'm pointing right here right here and right here that's where these three wires were connected so I cut them free from J1 and I connected the yellow wire which was uh, let's see the yellow wire was pin B on J1 I connected that to the double pole double throw switch so uh, positive voltage comes in when you flip the switch to that position it goes out down the yellow wire <clears throat> right into uh, the original switch over here the off position of that switch and when you turn the original switch on voltage crosses over and goes down the green wire and follows this green wire to the input of the MT3608 boost converter and uh, it does its thing inside the boost converter and boosts the voltage up from 12 volts up to uh, 26.7 volts and then it comes out the outer positive to uh, the red wire that I cut off of uh, J1 over here which was pin C and uh, it comes out pin C and goes up to one side of the circuit breaker right here and when that switch is flipped on the original switch is flipped on it turns the circuit breaker and the switch on at the same time and uh, positive power crosses over the circuit breaker to the orange wire which goes follows down to the original uh, uh, ribbon cable here and powers the electronics package of the uh, of the speaker uh, and now for the negative uh, since the casing is made of plastic it's not a common ground of course so uh, basically the negative side of the coaxial power going in comes down to the uh, <clears throat> To the MT3608 boost converter, uh, the input of the negative, and it, it crosses over to the output negative, so that's all common. And uh, it comes out of the uh, the output, and I, I I've actually uh, cross wired in a uh, a nine volt battery connector here, so. Um, 
yeah, you can uh, power this speaker from a 9 volt battery or from power coming in from a, uh, a wall wart. So it comes, uh, the negative comes out <clears throat> of the output, goes to the battery connector, and it also goes to, uh, this is a wire I added, it goes to a, a common screw over here on the uh, original um, electronics package of the speaker. And that's ground. That's common ground. And common ground is also common with pin A in the uh, J1 connector. So uh, basically, that's a simple explanation of uh, what's going on here. Uh, the switch I added was for isolation, so I could isolate the the uh, power. Uh, the wall wart power supply from the battery so I could never accidentally charge the battery with it or vice versa uh, the battery power going out to the coaxial connector because uh, no matter what switch position this is in which on position is in this is going to be the battery is going to be isolated from the power supply and that's it and uh, it does work and uh, now the next thing I got to do uh, for the video here is going to I'm going to be making up a cable from J1 to uh, the PSC 787, PSC 74, and uh, the VSC 12 series of radios. But uh, one other thing I might add to it though is a uh, right here. I, I might put a, uh, uh, a speaker jack in here connected to J1's A and K. And that way I can plug in any ham radio or uh, any type of radio into that outlet that I want to do maybe a 3.5 millimeter uh, mono connection right there but uh, that's about it and uh, the, I only had to cut those three wires to, to make the alteration and I added two other wires plus the switch and the uh, the boost converter which the boost converter will take any voltage from 2 through 24 volts so that leaves with this open I can use a 12 volt power supply 6 volt power supply up to a 24 volt power supply if I want to and I also power off a 9 volt battery if I want to uh, use it in the field without any AC power but uh, alrighty uh, thanks for listening and uh, I'll come back with the uh, with the cable video uh, uh, down the line okay guys uh, we're in the testing phase of uh, the conversion the power conversion to this speaker uh, I got my uh, H uh, 180 189 hooked to uh, the handset hooked to uh, the speaker and uh, <clears throat> I'm powering it through two 9 volt batteries connected in series so that's 19.4 volts is coming out of there going in through the uh, the coaxial power jack that I put in so the 19.3 the uh, four volts is feeding the uh, MT3608 uh, boost converter inside there. Uh, I tried running it off a single 9 volt battery yesterday, but I didn't film it though. And uh, it only lasted about an hour. So uh, and I took the battery off. It was a brand new battery and I tested it. The voltage before I put it on it was 19.1, uh, uh, yeah, 9.1 9 volts. <clears throat> and uh, when I when I was finished with it about 50 minutes later it was 7.2 uh, volts so I don't know if this is voltage dependent or milliamps dependent uh, I think these 9 volt batteries only have 350 milliamps uh, capacity in them anyways so I got two of them in series and I originally set up the uh, the boost converter to uh, be powered from uh, uh, two nine volts in series, uh, which was 19.3 volts, and uh, you know, getting 24 out. So I think it fell below the uh, the 15 volt uh, limit there, and it started uh, it started uh, being distorted and everything. You couldn't hear anything anymore. But uh, I'm going to try it with the uh, how I originally designed it. And this is the way the batteries are going to be in the uh, case if I can find room. And they're going to be laying down, connected, uh, positive to negative terminal. 
so it's one uh, it'll be one uh, 19 volt battery and they'll be laying horizontally uh, against the uh, basically against the speaker on the uh, plastic floor um, <clears throat> So I'm going to test how long uh, 19 volts will uh, power this for. Uh, I'm going to turn the volume up now. Excuse my hand. So I'm uh, I'm feeding it with this radio right here, and uh, I'll push the uh, the mute circuit, which does work. Uh, I muted it there in the handset. You can hear the handset playing, so that does work, and uh, you can now turn the volume up. So that works. Uh, turn the volume up here. So volume, the mute works. Uh, I haven't tried to push the talk yet because I haven't isolated uh, uh, the leads going into the radio and I'm afraid 24 volts is going to appear there when I key it and I don't want to put 24 volts into a 6 volt radio for obvious reasons so that'll be in the cable uh, the cable part of the video there when I do the cable I'm going to put isolation on the cable itself <clears throat> it's not going to be built into the speaker itself so uh, That'll be coming next. Uh, now you see the uh, clock there is where I started. Uh, so I'm just going to play the radio. Uh, for, hopefully for a few hours the battery lasts, but uh, we'll see. Uh, when you put two batteries in series, the milliamp hours don't go up. So it's still 350 milliamps. Um, so uh, I don't. Uh, this will tell me if it's voltage or milliamp hour dependent. If it fails in less than an hour, then I know it's milliamps. If the 19 volts goes for out a couple hours, three hours, hopefully four hours uh, or more, and we'll find out. In, uh, yeah, it'll only be a few seconds for you. I'm not going to run it for that long for the video, but uh, we'll stop it. I'll leave leave the volume about this high. And. Uh, It'll be a few seconds for you, but that'll be hopefully a couple of three hours for me. Hello, everybody. I just wanted to make my last video on the uh, the LS671 uh, uh, loudspeaker. Uh, I'm making up uh, an interface cable for it right now. Uh, this is its uh, schematic here. Uh, and this is how I, uh, how I did it. Uh, basically, uh, I, I made this cable up for this uh, loudspeaker system so it can be used with the PSC77 series of radios. Uh, I put a, a power supply inside the speaker that operates off of 12 volts but puts out 24 volts, which is the original voltage of the speaker. And everything works. Um, the loudspeaker, the transmission circuit, I made up a special uh, cable, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, I just finished it. Uh, basically, I'll turn the uh, the speaker up now. It's on. And I have a uh, an H138 handset hooked up to it right now. And when I key the mic, you can see the, uh, the power output uh, works here. I'll put it over to 10 amps, uh, 10 watts, and I get transmission power there. So uh, that's the keying the mic does that there. So I uh, had success with it there. I, uh, I made up a cable. With a U229 end on one end for the PSC77 and uh, the original P1 connector on the bottom of the uh, uh, LS671. Uh, in this little housing here, I put a uh, this is made out of PEX uh, 
piping. Uh, I split the cable and put a uh, an audio transformer in line with the speaker so I can isolate the 24 volts DC so it won't go back to the uh, 15 volt radio and uh, burn out the audio amplifier. So uh, that, that's what that's all about. Uh, I'm going to basically uh, cover it over with heat shrink tubing in a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to I drilled a hole in it so I could uh, put potting material inside there to solidify everything up inside there. But uh, yeah, basically that's what I got. And uh, it seems to operate well. Uh, I uh, was able to uh, transmit to my uh, my Yezu VX7 uh, radio which has 6 meters FM on it. And uh, I hear my voice uh, loud and clear and it comes over on my received signal comes over the loudspeaker uh, very good and uh, when you key the microphone it it, it also mutes the the uh, the loudspeaker while you're transmitting and uh, the volume control uh, works so I can turn the volume up in the handset or on the speaker uh, and everything works just as it should so uh, now this is gonna be the last video uh, I'll put it up uh, probably to YouTube, but uh, all right, thank you.